This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. The Quarantine Report. I am Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We're in the epicenter of the pandemic. As we turn now to, though, an incredible story unfolding in Venezuela, where President Nicolas Maduro announced Monday the government had detained two former U.S. Special Forces soldiers who took part in a failed coup attempt against him after 10 armed men landed in a boat near Caracas on Sunday. Venezuelan authorities killed eight of the men, whom they described as mercenary terrorists. Two men were captured. Speaking from his presidential palace, President Maduro showed U.S. passports for the two men, identified as Aaron Barry and Luke Denman. A former Green Beret named Jordan Goudreau has acknowledged the men were working with him and says they attempted to detain Maduro. Maduro accused the U.S. of being behind the plot. Mike Pompeo was betting on this attack and believed that this attack would end the revolution, end the constitution, overthrow the government, and kill me. God save us and protect us. The former Green Beret, Jordan Goudreau, runs a Florida-based private security firm called Silver Core USA. He told the Associated Press two Special Forces veterans he fought with in Iraq and Afghanistan were involved in the operation. Goudreau posted a video on Twitter Sunday in which he called the attack Operation Gideon. At 1,700 hours, a daring amphibious raid was launched from the border of Colombia deep into the heart of Caracas. Our men are continuing to fight right now. Our units have been activated in the south, west, and east of Venezuela. Commander Nieto is with me, is co-located, and Commander Sake is on the ground now fighting. Goudreau told the Associated Press the last time he communicated with the two Americans who were detained was when they were still offshore, running low on fuel. Goudreau's plan to oust Maduro reportedly began when he provided security at a concert organized by British billionaire Richard Branson in support of Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido. The Associated Press reports Goudreau had a connection to Trump's longtime bodyguard, Keith Schiller, and Goudreau reportedly accompanied Schiller to a meeting with Guaido's representatives last May in Miami. President Trump uh, has denied any involvement, um, uh, any U.S. involvement. For more, we're going to Miguel Tinkersalas, professor at Pomona College in Claremont, California, author of The Enduring Legacy, Oil, Culture and Society in Venezuela, as well as Venezuela, What Everyone Needs to Know. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Professor. Can you explain what you understand took place? Was this an attempted coup against Venezuela and at who exactly is direction? Um, it, it all appears to be an attempted coup. Uh, again, uh, events are unfolding in Venezuela. Uh, at the same time, it looks like a real bad Rambo movie uh, or a really bad Venezuelan telenovela. Um, the reality is that this involved disgruntled Venezuelan military, uh, former police, deserters, uh, political opponents of the Maduro government, um, and uh, was, was training in Colombia and somehow thought that by landing two boats, one in Macuto, right next to the uh, major airport and port, and the other one in Chuao, in the state of Aragua, that they were somehow managed to get to Caracas and capture Maduro and install a new government. Um, it, it, it is almost fictional. Uh, unfortunately, it's operating in a very charged environment, one in which the U.S. is seeking regime change uh, and one in which the opposition has adopted, in fact, support for military action, as it did in 2019, with a support for a coup uh, against Maduro. So it's, it's operating in very troubled waters. Uh, and the consequences for Venezuela could be very dire uh, going forward. And, and Miguel Tinkersalas, there was a report out of, Ven of, of Venezuela that there was a, a contract that surfaced, a $200 million contract that supposedly the opposition leader, Juan Guaido, signed with Mr. Goudros in late October. Could you talk about that? Sure. Goudreau um, actually presented the contract to Patricia Poleo, uh, an op opposition broadcaster uh, in Florida. And she uh, posted it and reported it on her uh, website uh, and invited Guaido and JJ Rendon, uh, the person in charge of Maduro's uh, publicity uh, and uh, a campaign, and other individuals to come forward and deny it. None have come forward to deny it. Uh, so this, this plot could long-term implicate uh, not only the U.S. government, also the opposition in Venezuela, Guaido, and others, uh, it also allows them plausible deniability. I mean, what they want from this is to say, if it succeeded, we would take credit for it. Uh, they would be part of this transition government. Uh, and if it failed, well, we were not a part of it. 
uh, we have plausible deniability the same way that Trump has plausible deniability, uh, or at least tries to claim plausible deniability. But I insist it's the context in which Pompeo, Elliot Abrams, and the Trump White House have created that during the pandemic, seeking regime change, imposing further sanctions, tightening those sanctions, um, and, uh, and authorizing movement of U.S. military to the Caribbean and others that sets the context in the landscape for which this event happens. And uh, you mentioned Elliot Abrams. Is it conceivable that President Trump's special envoy to Venezuela had no knowledge of what was going on here? Um, it's difficult to imagine that, uh, given they were training on the Colombian border, an area that is highly surveilled, uh, an area where the Colombian military is very active, um, that somehow they would not have picked up any information. Plus, Goudreau, when he tweeted, included real Donald Trump in his tweets about the activities happening in Venezuela. Um, so again, um, what the U.S. would like is plausible deniability. We may find out later on that, yes, they knew about it, turned a blind eye to it, uh, see, see if it would actually actually be successful um, and eventually then take advantage of it if it did. Um, but again, I insist it's the context at which it operates that is the most fundamental because it creates the conditions for uh, attempted violent unconstitutional regime change in Venezuela, when in fact what Venezuela needs in this time period is negotiations between the different political forces where funds can be released, where they can fight the coronavirus, where they can try to find common ground as opposed to continued conflict we've seen before. So what more do you know about SilverCore, this Florida security form, um, firm, uh, which provided security for President Trump two years ago at one of his political rallies in North Carolina? A uh, photo shows Goudreau wearing an earpiece at a Trump rally in Charlotte, North Carolina, at a coliseum. Um, and echoes of what is this, Miguel Tinkersal, especially for young people who don't know the U.S. involvement in the 80s in Latin America? It has echoes of a Bay of Pigs. It has echoes about of psychological operations and psych operations and black op operations that were done in Latin America during the entire 1970s, 80s, and 90s. It even harkens to Venezuela. Uh, in uh, 1806, Francisco Miranda attempted an invasion of Venezuela through La Vela de Coro in, in the peninsula of Paraguaná um, and did not have any support from the Afro population in the region. In fact, they rebelled against him. Um, so there, there are shades of many things here, um, it, it, which is all very troubling to Venezuela because, again, Goudreau appeals delusional. He seems uh, to be an Eric Prince uh, Blackwater wannabe. Uh, he provided security uh, for a concert that was held on February 23rd uh, by Branson on the uh, Cucuta border with Venezuela. Um, so he has, it, he's in, injected himself into opposition politics, into what was happening with Guaido at the border. Um, so again, it's a very, very dangerous figure, although he may have this delusional sense of himself uh, and grandeur. He, is, he can play in that role because of U.S. policy. And, Miguel, we just have about less than a minute left, about 30 seconds, but the ability of the Maduro administration to continue to, uh, to persevere in the face of a U.S. embargo, in the face of now of an indictment by the U.S. Uh, government of, uh, of Maduro himself, could you talk about the, uh, the ability of this administration to survive? Well, I think that the key thing is that, again, most U.S. policymakers continue to look at Venezuela as Maduro teetering, uh, because, again, their main informants are Guaido and the opposition. Rather than open up space, rather than engage in conversation, in negotiations, um, Maduro actually still has military support. We saw that once again uh, on the uh, on Sunday when the so-called invasion seconds, happened. We have five seconds, Miguel. So I think it's fundamental to understand Venezuela needs negotiations and conversation, not invasions. Miguel Tinker Salas is a professor at Pomona College in Claremont, California, author of The Enduring Legacy, Oil, Culture and Society in Venezuela. That does it for our show. Democracy Now! is working with as few people on site as possible. The majority of our amazing team is working from home. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Stay safe.